you're at a uh, successful Who's Number One event for the team. You got you had uh, two teammates uh, on the card tonight, not fighting yourself. Uh, talk to me about uh, Nicholas and Davis. Yeah, so we had Davis come out. He was uh, he was competing against a very high level wrestler, like a world level wrestler. And uh, you know, he came out. He pulled guard and uh, had a few attempts on the legs, a few attempts on the uh, on the back, and you know, almost wrestled up a few times. Um, and he definitely got the better of the match for sure. He took the guys back and swept them a few times, passed his guard a few times. Uh, his opponent was able to heist back up to his feet and start wrestling again. And Davis had a little bit of hard time, had a hard time holding him down, but it had a very convincing win over him. Passed his guard, took his back, almost finished him at one point. His opponent had his hand up ready to tap and then Davis went to adjust the grip and he lost it but very impressed with Davis he uh his first big performance on, on the on a big stage tonight and he uh he lived up to the to the hype so I'm very happy for him and Nicholas is is Nicholas he, he's he's bringing the sport to a new level he's the one of the only guys ever to go out there and predict submissions he spray painted a triangle on the back of his gi and he went out there and you know swept Pedro Passed his guard, mounted him, and triangled him. So, I mean, what else can you really can you really ask for? Who do you think you got the idea for uh, calling it a shot for the triangle from? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna hope it's me. I'm gonna hope it's me. He took a page out of my book and he he did it just as good, if not better, than I did. Uh, what did? Uh, how was the preparation for him coming into this match? You know, how are you feeling about uh, you know Nicholas uh, heading out there? Extremely confident. Uh, real confident, you know. I know I know Nicholas's game very well. I know Pedro's game very well, and Pedro is actually better. I would say by pretty much by far. Uh, he's he's much better no gi than he is in the gi, and right now nobody's better than the world than Nicholas in the gi. So uh, I was very confident in Nicholas going out here, and I I put my eggs in the right basket for this one. Uh, he made a big twenty thousand dollar bet afterwards. What was your thought on that? I mean. You guys can hit all you want, but he's literally single-handedly saving gi jiu-jitsu right now. Uh, so uh, I think it's great. I think that you know he takes the the reigning absolute world champion, uh, you know, from Worlds, and then they come and they compete for money on who's number one, and they do a bet match. I think it's great. So I think uh, you know you put a big target on his back, and I'm looking forward to see uh, when is Worlds. I don't know. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. So you know we'll see who wins the absolute at Worlds, and then they can come and have a match on who's number one. Davis, young guy, lower belt, coming onto a card like this, not as much experience. How much was he looking to you guys for guidance and for, uh, uh, you know, advice? Yes. Yeah, so Davis is just is getting, his whole thing is just getting used to competing because he hasn't competed that much. And so he's, he's a killer in the gym. He does very, uh, very, very well against all the guys, you know, even juniors, seniors. He's competitive, you know, for any of the guys in the gym. And his whole thing is just to get the nerves out, get used to competing, and so this is his first first event on a big stage, and you know, he went out there, he got the nerves out, and he performed, you know, like he should have. Not, not like, he didn't perform like he does in the gym just quite yet, but you know, he performed very, very well and managed to, to squeeze out a victory. You've been uh, almost like trying to like make this guy famous to, uh, against his will, right? Can you just tell me, like, who is Davis Asari for people who still may not know? So Davis moved here to go to college and he liked doing jiu-jitsu and his, I think his parents said as long as you you know go to school you can continue to do jiu-jitsu and he started training with us and you know he's very very talented and he's learning at a very rapid rate and Davis is the first person to strangle me unconscious ever in my jiu-jitsu career so I kind of I posted it on Instagram and he doesn't like to use Instagram he doesn't want to be famous or anything right now at least and he went from like 1,200 to like 15,000 followers or something in like one night, or maybe 1,200 or 1,500 to 12,000, something like that. He gained like over 10,000 followers in 24 hours. And I was like, hey man, like you're famous now. He's like, this is the worst thing that anyone's ever done to me. He's like, I don't want all this. I don't want all this attention. I'm like, man, you gotta start using your Instagram now. You're famous. How does it feel now watching these junior members come up? They're getting spots on, you know, big cards like WNO, you know, how does that feel to you? Oh, it's great. I, I think as you know, it's great for the sport. We need new up-and-coming guys. We need new stars, and you know, the, the older generation, the, you know, the generation that you know came before me, is kind of being phased out now. Like, well, I say that, but Lovato just came out and crushed, and you know, crushed it tonight. But you know, overall, that generation is starting to you know move out in a way, and my generation is coming up, and soon my generation is going to start to get old. So, you know, we have to have those new guys coming up and you know building new stars. So I think it's great for the juniors to come in and and uh, and start. 
getting that competition experience against high level guys on a big stage. What else uh, did you think of the card? Did anything else uh, stand out on the uh, eight match card besides you guys? Uh, yeah, I thought Isaac's guard passing was pretty impressive. You know, he did a good job of you know staying past the hip line and he was using some of the camping stuff and Tori on the work that we do. Uh, and so he put a lot of pressure on Jacob Couch, which I I thought was going to happen. I you know posted about some the pre-fight predictions. I thought that Jacob was going to have a hard time holding on to him and leg locking him, and Isaac kind of grind him out. And you know that's what happened. So he he was he was impressive. I thought Davis was impressive in his composure. I thought that Dante Leon had a really nice back take, uh, you know, going in there. I mean, just from top to bottom, matches were impressive. Uh, William Tackett had a super exciting match, and then of course you have you can't ignore Nicholas. I mean, all the matches from start to finish were pretty exciting tonight. Even though there were only two submissions, there was a lot of action in all the matches. So we had Nicholas in here, and he talked to us about how. I said, is there anything on your mind? He said, absolutely. And he gave a big thing about how people need to be more selective about being fans of skilled grapplers rather than just champions. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah, because I would say there's, a, there's a quite often a very big difference between being good at winning and being good at jiu-jitsu. Just because you're good at jiu-jitsu doesn't mean you're good at winning. And just because you're good at winning doesn't mean you're good at jiu-jitsu. Sometimes... You can be very good at winning because you're very good at jiu-jitsu, but you can also be very good at winning just because you're a good tactician. And I think that, you know, obviously there is a place for champions and you should value, you know, being a champion. And if you're a guy who says that he's skilled at jiu-jitsu but he can't really win anything, it's hard to really have any credibility because it just looks like you're whining because you can't win anything. But when it comes from a champion saying that, uh, and I completely agree, I think it kind of changes the perspective. And so I think that, you know, we should have an emphasis on, on valuing people who are good at jiu-jitsu just to be good at jiu-jitsu rather than people who just do nothing, you know, pitter-patter around, score an advantage, and they win, you know, they win ADCC. Um, so there definitely is a place for the champions because there is a level of, uh, you know, experience and mat tactics and, you know, different kinds of tactics to win, and that stuff is important. But ultimately what we're looking for is, you know, we want to push the sport forward and we want to have better technical jiu-jitsu. So, I think there's a place for both, but definitely you can't overlook the people who don't win but are very good at jiu-jitsu. Uh, have you ever been to Oklahoma City before? What did you think of the fans, the venue? <clears throat> this is the first time in Oklahoma. I love, look, I love Oklahoma. I actually drove in uh, today and I got to drive out tomorrow or early uh, early morning, so I'm not going to get to experience too much of it, but the fans here are amazing. I have a you know big fan base here. I took pictures with ton, tons of people, did a meet and greet here, and uh, just real down-to-earth, like hard-working American people, it seems like. so. Uh, I love Oklahoma, and uh, I'm looking forward to coming back and actually having, you know, time to stay here and, and explore. Before we get out of here, anything else you want to talk about? No, um, you know, I think that was a uh, that was a good showing. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna go. Actually, I have to make a whole post about this. I have to get surgery on Monday, so that's why I'm. I'm I was supposed to headline this event actually, but I have to get. I got sick and I have to get surgery on Monday, so I have to make a post about that. Uh, but after that, I have like a month recovery, and then I'll be back into. Uh, back in action, back in the training, back in the camp, and hopefully I'll be back on the competition mat soon, soon enough. Wishing you nothing but the best. Get back soon, and uh, we'll be looking out for you. Gordon Ryan, King, thank you so much.